Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, also known as Tubal Cane, and I've got an interesting project here today, I believe. And actually it's for my friend Dan, and he's making a hovercraft. So he's got this wooden propeller. Now let me make sure that you understand this is not an airplane, because that would be against the FAA or FCC or one of those alphabet groups. So anyway, he'll be in a little farm pond that's 18 inches deep. So, uh, anyway, this is the original hub. I'm making a hub. This is the original hub, and the wooden propeller would have been sandwiched between these two plates. Well, this one broke. And you can see why. These screw holes are so... This is commercially made. These screw holes are so close to the, to the edge. There's just no meat there at all. So we're going to build this stronger and better than whoever designed this and this is a tapered hole so I have to bore it out at a three, de three degree angle for a split lock, <coughs> split lock bushing so he's got a new one of those too one inch shaft and that's a three degree taper and this came from Granger's I'm not sure where Dan bought this aluminum and I do not know what alloy it is and, and nor do I care but it's five inches in diameter one and a half inches thick and this has been saw cut and it's just perfect matter of fact I, I'm still going to face one side of it but I went around and uh, miked this in four different spots and it's, it's all within a thousandth or two so that's pretty amazing considering that my saw would have cut one fourth of an inch thicker on one side than the other so what I'm going to do is put this in the closing lathe, three jaw chuck. I've already reversed the jaws and I want to get most of the meat out there. Rather than just drill this with twist drills, I have decided to use an annular cutter. Remember when I got these from Beaver? So I'm going to use inch and a half, brand new. And this is the adapter, number three, more staper. So that'll go in like that, be locked in place, and I will rough that out. And then be ready to bore it with a boring bar, three degree angle. Wow, that really does a great job. And there's the plug that we did not have to reduce to tiny chips. It still wasn't real fast. That took about 10 minutes to make that hole. I was running it at low speed. A plus for an annular cutter. As I said earlier, this is a 3 degree angle on the taper lock bushing. So I want to set the compound for 3 degrees, in fact I already have, but I think you know that it is not all that accurate to use the little protractor here, depending how accurately they made the machine and how good your eyesight is and the light and all that. So I'm using a little different method here with the dial indicator. Now this is a 3 degree taper block, so I'll be setting that up against the compound and notice how I've got the uh, dial indicator set here. So I'll just run it. Well, I've already done it. I went back and forth across it, so I'm within about a thousandth. I'll zoom in and show you that. Believe me, it was very fiddly to do that. Now, I did run a stone across here. There might have been a few burrs. So taking the taper block and holding it up against the best I can do I ran the carriage back and forth. Well, wait a minute here. 
I better zero out the dial indicator, watch that needle right there and then I went back and forth and back and forth and I'm within a thousand so I'm ready to bore three degrees Well, I'm stopping for a minute to do a test fit. By the way, I'm using an Aloris boring bar, one inch diameter. So let's see how far it goes in. So it started, and I would like to end up with about three eighths of an inch space right here so that it can be drawn in with the two bolts. There's no good way to measure that, so I'm just taking a series of light cuts and doing a test fit. Well, I think I'm done. Again, what we're doing here is boring a taper using the compound rest method. Fits in from this angle. Perhaps you can't see it, but it's right at three-eighths of an inch, and that's what Danny told me to set it for. So I'm done. I'm going to take it out, and we got some holes to drill. Really turned out nice. Decent finish, too. Now I did not face the back side, no need, I can always do that later if he wants me to. So again, the bushing goes in, and I've got it marked here. Like that. And we need three holes in there, so I'm using a transfer punch here, and I will transfer all three. And I'm ready to drill and tap. Now I'm going to drill the hole all the way through the tap drill size and then uh, a clearance size from the back side about halfway through because we only need about a half inch of thread. And those are I believe 3 8 bolts. Well I had to remove a lot of chips, although I didn't have to remove this because it came out as a plug. And I will throw it. Don't save this junk. You won't remember you got it anyway. Okay, <laughs> little rant there. Some of you guys want to save everything. Okay, so I asked Dan, do you want me to put this step in here? He said, no, don't bother. And I'm so glad he said that because that would be an awful lot to remove. And that could be done later, but it apparently serves no purpose at all for his hovercraft to put that in. So off camera, I will drill and tap those holes, and I'll be back tomorrow to finish this up. So there's about a half inch of thread in there, and it's just a clearance on the back side. So a drum roll, if you please. And these are grade 5 hardened bolts. See if they line up. And they do. Now see, that'll tighten down against the uh, the shaft. I don't know if he's got a, a keyway in the shaft or not. But it's looking pretty good and I think I'm done. But there's one other thing that I think has to be done but I'm going to let Dan do it or, or advise me on it when he gets back from vacation. But remember the uh, <coughs> propeller is going to be sandwiched between this and this. That doesn't even look thick enough, does it? So there'll need to be four more holes. One, two, three, four. And I think they're probably uh, bolts with nuts. I'm, I'm not sure. But anyway, that about finishes this job. I hope Dan 
doesn't get killed <laughs> driving that crazy thing in the farm pond but he's gonna have fun that's his summer project so hope you enjoyed this little video to see the way I tackled the problem here of cutting an internal taper for the bushing give me a thumbs up if I deserve it and I'll see you in the next video so long for now it's Mr. Pete